we have from Beyond the Talk, Richard Stanton. You will be live and in person for the next couple of days at the vault on Thursday and Friday. Mm -hmm. But we have him in studio this morning to talk a little bit about you are a cave rescue diver. And the big story, of course, is the Thai cave rescue story. Back in 2018. Yes. Welcome, Rick. Thank Good. you. Welcome to the Cayman Islands, first of all. It's your first time here, right? It is indeed, yes. Okay. Uh, and a good friend that lived here. I was supposed to come, but I never managed to find the time for it. I was always underground somewhere. <laughs> and you're a diver too. You I see, know. You, you, I can't wait. Have you dove here yet since you've been here? No, not at all. Okay. And you, you call me a diver, but I wouldn't. I just <laughs> happen to use diving equipment to oh, explore okay. caves. I, I actually have no diving qualification. I hope that doesn't put. Stop. What are you talking I, about? I hope Stop. that doesn't put people off. You're kind of like the I guy that. Does anyone on the plane know how to fly the plane? I do. <laughs> I'll give it a shot and see what happens. It's like that kind of guy, right? I'll so, say, well, yes. Self-taught. <laughs> how yeah. did you get into cave diving in the first place then? I was 18, uh, doing my A-levels at school. A documentary came on the tele television. I looked at it and I totally identified with uh, two ordinary guys in England exploring a cave by cave diving so they were using diving equipment i grew up watching jacques cousteau you know i was used to so that's you know really liked that but this gave it a sense of purpose where you could explore and that was the main thing exploring you didn't have to go to the ends of the earth right right you were, they were just diving in, in, in england and, and you know you don't it's sort of amateur exploration is there so, a lot of cave diving in england uh there is there and um you wouldn't call it world class, it's very specialist, but those specialist skills were really what helped us in Thailand. Right, okay, so let's take it back to the summer of 2018, that was both June and July. <coughs> That's of that correct, year. yes. So for people who, a lot of us have heard about it, and I was traveling actually during that time, but can you just give us a brief rundown uh, a brief rundown. Well, as much as possible, yeah. <laughs> so the, Just for those listening that listening, might not so know about a, the, a the story. A junior football team, after football, decided to go on a boys' adventure. Now, I see mm -hmm. lots of things. What were they doing there? They're just boys having fun. They had a bit larger adventure than they were expecting. It was pre-monsoon. The rains came. The rains filled the cave up, unfortunately, as they were in there and blocked their exit. Basically, the water was at the top of the of the cave levels. So they had to go underwater to get out. So they had a limited space even to survive and breathe and all that. Well, th then it got worse and worse. Right. Them, and yeah, they yeah. made some really good calls, which I won't go into here. And then, sure. of course, you know, they realised they were missing. They got the Thai Navy SEALs, who are the sort of elite diving force in Thailand, but they have no cave diving experience. Mm -hmm. And the cave kept filling up and up. And then uh, eventually there was an English guy on site and he said, you need some people with expertise in this. And he gave our names. And that's how we got called in. Okay. Even then, the rain was so bad that the cave kept filling up. Eventually, the rain uh, abated enough to allow us to dive. And that's sort of when we found them. Right. We found them. Yeah. Everyone presumably has seen that iconic footage that we took. And even at that point, we did, we had no uh, no clue how to get them out, and that took a few days coming up with the plan. And eventually, we brought a doctor in um, to it's not a secret to sedate them, and you know they brought them out over a th three day period. Okay, so you're talking That's about the sedated. synopsis. Yeah, and you had to take them. Now, were they <coughs> even though they were sedated, did they have oxygen strapped to them when they were taken out? Because they had to go underwater at a certain get, distance, right? They, well, it was about a kilometre and a half underwater. Okay. Uh, but it wasn't an easy journey. It took two and a half hours. They had a cylinder, not on their back like a normal scuba cylinder would have. It was on their chest. Mm -hmm. uh, and they had a mask on, a full mask, so they couldn't lose the regulator or the, the mask couldn't be dislodged. Yeah, they were... What was your level of anxiety during that time when you were taking them out like that? Was it like 100 or was it 5,000? Where were you at on that? It was... Uh, yes, just, it, was just... right, it was right up there. So what we tried to do <laughs> yeah. was to try and dehumanize them we treated them you know the whole conversation was about packaging them and 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 uh, you know just a package they were like we were cargo we yeah, were cargo okay. when we had a harness on them with a with a strap so basically it was like carrying a shopping bag and right. that's all that you can talk about that as much as you like yeah but when you've got a child's life in your arms underwater and they're unconscious that's a completely different thing and they it was one on one, one of them, one of us. There were four people carrying the boys, um, not in a relay. Once you had charge of your boy, 
he was re your responsibility for the whole journey out, two and a half, three hours, whatever wow. it took. And that's a lot Man. of responsibility. And you, can, you can't see them, but you can hear them breathing. And that, yes, that brought it home. They weren't just a, a, a piece of cargo or package. They were a living human being. They were underwater, unconscious. But it probably doesn't hit you until it's done, what you just did. And then you're done, you're like, oh, man, I just, wow, we just did that. Even then, days later. And then you've got to do it again. Right. And, <laughs> yeah. and again. Right, yeah. So, Rick, I know it was you and one other diver, one other British diver that you do a lot of rescues with that found the boys <laughs> and the soccer coach or the football coach first. So what was the reaction from them when they realized that somebody knew where they were and people might be coming to rescue them. I just can't even imagine the reaction on their faces, how they reacted to you guys, what they said, what happened. Uh, so I was with, I'll go to give him a, a name shout, John Valanthan, who's my diving buddy, and we we were the ones that found them. Uh, look, you have actually seen that. that. That iconic video is the real deal. That's what happened. They were walking down the slope and we ca captured them in real time as they were coming towards us. They were completely reserved. They weren't leaping up and down. They weren't overexcited. They weren't... We didn't know what we were going to encounter. We thought they might jump on us or, you know, or try and get our equipment to go out or anything. We had to be prepared for anything. But no, they were completely, um, well, I would say the word, I use the word stoic, really. Shock. Some really of them, be in shock, wouldn't they? Some of, them, some of the smaller boys, if you look at the video, were uh, a bit overcome and were, were in tears. But they sort of, everything they did was very matter of fact. Huh. They, and... You know, they're saying, oh, can you take us out now? They didn't quite realise the situation. We were going, we, we can't take you out. We're, we're not in a position to take right. you out. It's a little we, more complicated yes, than we, that. There will be lots more people coming and we will come back, but we can't take you out now. They must have been so hungry and thirsty. And well, it's hard to imagine, isn't it? Nine days without any food. I mean, yeah. uh, and, the, and they said they were hungry. I mean, imagine a... a Western child going nine days without the internet, let alone food. Right. I mean, it's, well, and it's, it's also there's no end to it. You don't know when that's going to end it, either. If you have a goal, thing. you can almost get to the goal. But if you don't know, there's going to no be ending, idea. And no yeah. communication. <laughs> and uh, seemingly, from what I've read, is they had no idea the magnitude of that the whole world was watching this rescue happen. Uh, from what I understand, some of the boys thought that once they were rescued, they'd have to take their bikes that they left on the outside of the cave and ride back home after that. that well, that's the narrative, and, the, and it was more than that. The, the one who was going to ride home was lived the furthest, and he was going to report to all the other families. I mean, you, you couldn't make this stuff up. Wow. Yet they've got people story. there from Australia and uh, right. England, so who, who knows where the, where the truth lies? Well, if you want to hear more of this... Please come see Rick. It's a fascinating story. They'll, you'll have photographs, some exclusive videos as well in this talk. And this is all happening at The Loft mm -hmm. from 6 to 8 p.m. It's happening on Thursday. And then because it's sold out so quickly, they did a second day on Friday. So there are tickets still available on Friday. Exactly. If you go to compassmedia.com uh, forward slash events and you can pick up your tickets there Definitely, we, I, I'm going. Yeah, I, I have to go. Okay. I need to nice. hear more. Yeah, Richard Stanton, you are a hero. Thank yes. you very much. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks. For, Thanks and for this is you. just one of many rescues you've done. We could talk to you for the rest of the show, and we'd still have questions for you. Well, Terry, save, save the questions till after the we, talk. There you go. We will, yes. yes. Terry, so thank just, you so much. I'll say it publicly now. If I ever get stuck in a cave underwater, call him. Yep. Okay, he's come our guy. Me, please. Yeah, he's our guy. Rick, thank you for coming <laughs> thank through. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. It's been a pleasure.